Hello and welcome to today's episode of Bale's Chemistry. Today we're talking about the enthalpy of solution. This is on paper one of your AQA final exams and it's specification 1.8 thermodynamics. So hopefully remember this definition from the episode we did on thermodynamics definitions. If you can't remember it, there's a link in the top of the screen right now. But the enthalpy of solution is the enthalpy change when one mole of an ionic substance dissolves in enough solvent to form an infinitely dilute solution. So what we're really talking about here is breaking apart the ionic lattices to form ionic solutions. So when it comes to making a solution, we need to think about the process which is taking place. So we take our ionic lattice, we add it to our solvent, and then we form a dilute solution where the ions have all separated away from each other. What this actually looks like on a sort of molecular level is we take our ionic lattice again and we're separating it apart into two sort of groups, our positive ions and our negative ions. And these are both surrounded by water molecules. When we think about dissolving ionic lattices, we can break it down into two steps. In the first step, the lattice enthalpy of dissociation, is we break apart the bonds between the ions in the ionic lattice to form gaseous ions. This is an endothermic process. In the second step, the enthalpy change of hydration is where we form new bonds between the ions and the water molecules. This is an exothermic process. So we can turn that process into a Hess cycle. We'll start with a solid ionic lattice and go across to making aqueous ions. We'll then draw the alternative route via the gaseous ions along the bottom. We'll label each section. So on the first one, we've got the lattice dissociation enthalpy, which makes us the gaseous ions. And in the second step, we've got the enthalpy of hydration of positive ions and the enthalpy of hydration of negative ions. Let's look at an example of sodium chloride dissolving to form aqueous sodium ions and aqueous chlorine ions. We'll draw out an alternative pathway via the gaseous ions underneath, and then we'll add in the lattice enthalpy of dissociation, the enthalpy of hydration for sodium, and the enthalpy of hydration for chlorine. When we write out the equation to work out the enthalpy of solution, we'll start off with the lattice enthalpy of dissociation, then we'll add to that the sum of the hydrations. So that will be the enthalpy of hydration for sodium and the enthalpy of hydration for chlorine. Substitute in the numbers and we get a plus 17 kilojoules per mole for this whole process. When it comes to hydrating ions, positive ions and negative ions behave slightly differently. Positive ions form a weak attraction to the negative charge on the oxygen. They can also form a stronger dative bond to the lone pair, but this is more unusual. Negative ions tend to have a lone pair of electrons, and this forms a hydrogen bond between the slightly positive charge and the hydrogen in the water molecule. The value of enthalpy of hydration depends on two things. The first one is the size of the ion. Smaller ions tend to have stronger attractions and therefore bigger enthalpies of hydration. Ions with bigger charges also have stronger attractions and therefore bigger enthalpies of hydration as well. And that's all for today. I hope you've picked up the key points about the enthalpy of solution. If you've liked the video, please hit thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos on thermodynamics this week.